God, these shorter six episode South Park seasons really do come and go so quick, don't they? Even with two weeks off in the middle, it feels like season 26 just started. The fifth and penultimate episode of the season of South Park, titled Dickenbow's Hot Dogs, <laughs> just aired, and I thought this was another great example of South Park finding a perfect balance between old and new. This is a really great Butters episode, a really great Cartman episode, and a very strong Kenny episode, for his birthday no less, but it also definitely feels like a bit of an inside look at how Matt and Trey have been feeling while they re open Casa Bonita, so there's a ton to talk about. Let's dive in. Like I said, this is a great Butters episode, as Butters gets a part-time job at Willie's Chili Ice Cream Shop. This definitely seems to be inspired by the recent string of states that have been loosening up child labor laws due to the severe lack of people who have any interest in working in the service industry. Yeah, well, I guess these days it's real hard for businesses to find people to work, so they'll take whatever they can get. But I think the story really fits for Butters for a bunch of reasons. He's generally a really hard worker, episodes like Butters Bottom Bitch showing his surprise rising work ethic and business acumen. Both alternate futures in the post-COVID specials actually showcase this well also. In one, he becomes the ultimate salesman slinging NFTs, and then in the fixed future, an incredibly hardworking server at Bennigan's. It also makes sense that Butter's parents would want to put him to work. They ground him every chance they get, so their perception would be that he should be out working and not getting into trouble. But this is also a great Cartman slash Butter story. One of those classic instances where Cartman manages to manipulate Butters into something he isn't actually interested in doing. In in line with episodes like the death of Eric Cartman, Osimo, and fittingly, Casa Bonita. When Butters gets this job, Cartman is instantly jealous of the money he'll be making. My dad told me if I got a job, we could put my paychecks in my very own bank account. I want a bank account. And this line cracked me up because I actually just watched an episode in season four where Cartman is presented with this exact opportunity. Take that money and open up a savings account that has compounded daily interest. <laughs> You can compound daily my ass with interest, man. I'm going to the toy store and buy me a skateboard. I think this is a good illustration of Cartman's psychology. When his mom told him it's something he should do, he said hell no. But when it's something another kid has, he gets jealous. I really loved Leanne's reaction to Cartman asking her to let him get a job, recognizing that he is absolutely not cut out for work in the service industry. And I also love that this conversation all embraces the storyline last season that put them in the hot dog house in the first place. And of course, Leanne was right. Cartman is an absolutely awful employee. Employee, refusing to work, satirizing a lot of the rhetoric you hear about employment from the younger generations these days. So haven't you heard of Bare Minimum Mondays? It's a thing that young people created because we care about our mental health. But after doing exactly no work, Cartman starts to wonder why he can't be the boss, and he gets an idea. In a sequence that parodies the classic opening of 2001 A Space Odyssey, a really funny homage. Cartman recruits Kenny, and the pair decide to use Butter's new income as capital to renovate and reopen a hot dog restaurant in Cartman's Coney Island Hot Dog House. Honestly, just a really fun, simple idea. And I especially love that this entire episode premise feels like a classic Cartman scheme while still building on the continuity that they've established in the more recent seasons. While it was pretty short-lived, this is a really fun culmination of the little Cartman hot dog house arc. And on top of that, it parallels Matt and Trey's real-life venture saving and renovating Casa Bonita, whose grand reopening is almost here. A place that people from all over Colorado would want to come and see! I love that they did a Cartman and Kenny partnership for this one too. One Trey character, one Matt character, seemingly representing their partnership as owners of Casa Bonita. They usually go with Stan and Kyle to represent the pair, but we honestly have not gotten enough Kenny recently, and this episode aired on his damn birthday, so I'm glad they gave him some focus. And man, it was really funny to see them show his face in this episode, albeit with some sweet shades on, but especially because I literally just put out the video about all the times we see Kenny's face and hear his unmuffled dialogue. No clear dialogue in this one, unfortunately, but I do love Kenny's restaurant owner look here. They're even using it as their South Park Studios avatar on YouTube right now. Love to see it. And this was like a whole montage of an entire day of events, too, so I like the implication that sometimes Kenny just just talks unmuffled to his friends, and that's pretty normal. We're the only ones who just don't see it that often. Cartman and Kenny end up naming the restaurant Dick and Bow's Hot Dogs, and it's honestly kind of refreshing to just get a classic childish dick joke in South Park. <laughs> <laughs> it's also refreshing to see these two just laugh hysterically together. Even though this is an episode about them starting a restaurant, a super adult-ass thing to do, they're still using it as an opportunity to be super immature. Interestingly, it looks like they actually changed the name of not only the restaurant, but the entire episode at the last minute while making this episode. Earlier in the week, all of the official marketing for the episode listed the title as Dickimble's Hot Dog, which is obviously just a different Dick and Balls pun. The IMDb listing, Wikipedia, and official 
official tweets about the show also all listed the episode as Dickimbles. But Dickenbaus is way better. I'm glad they opted to change this. Gotta get a good German sounding name for your Wiener Hut pun. I really wonder if the way they portrayed Eric and Kenny as restaurant owners is how Matt and Trey have felt through this entire process opening Casa Bonita. Throwing out ideas and plans without the know-how, and then sort of just watching as everyone else does the construction. I'm sure they've learned a lot. I did get a chuckle out of them showing that literally nobody wanted to apply to work at the restaurant, because literally yesterday I saw a news report about how people were lining up to apply to work at Casa Bonita. But I guess that's the difference when you're a couple of kids, and not Matt Stone and Trey Parker. <laughs> God, but I loved that they brought back Daryl Weathers, aka the Tucker Jobs guy, who first appeared in Season 8's Goobacks, and the revelation that he, too, is lazy as hell when it comes to employment. All right, fine, never mind, we don't want to hire you. You're gonna take my job! And ultimately, it's Butter's hard work that saves the day and brings customers to the new restaurant, earning him his entire investment back, but getting Cartman all the credit in the process. And man, do I love how Cartman gets his comeuppance in this episode. Butters uses his incredible business acumen to develop an exit strategy from the business that includes relocating the Cartmans. We think that my little Eric deserves to get exactly what he's been wanting for a long time. And so, the Cartman Hot Dog House saga Saga ends with Cartman finally moving back into his old house, but only after the hot dog house became the literal coolest place for a kid to possibly live. But I hate this stupid house! I don't want to be here! I want to be in Dickin' Bad! God, just so satisfying. Butters gets his revenge on Cartman for taking advantage once again, and Leanne gets another well-deserved win over her son after he forced her through the entire hot dog house ordeal. Though I was a tad disappointed that there were zero references to the Prince and Princess of Canada having lived in this house from Worldwide Privacy Tour just a few episodes ago. I had kind of hoped that the prince was like just still living in South Park, but it's super interesting to see them conclude this arc and sort of reset the continuity on Cartman's house. It was a short-lived thing, they only lived there for seven episodes and two Paramount Plus specials, but I kind of like that they're willing to do these little mini arcs and conclude them when it feels right. Plus, I would be shocked if this was the last we see of Dick and Bow's hot dogs. It's now one of the coolest places for kids to hang out in South Park, and I expect it will become a semi-regular location that they visit in the series. I like that the show is willing to continue to evolve and change things up, and even change things back. I also love that this was clearly inspired by their experiences opening and renovating Casa Bonita. This is sort of the second time they've done something like this. Back in season 15, they were released the excellent episode Broadway Brodown right around the time their musical Book of Mormon was released. It all focused on Randy writing his own Broadway musical, and only at the end did it plug Book of Mormon at all. The episode itself didn't mention Book of Mormon even once, in the same way that this one didn't mention Casa Bonita either. It's just a narrative parallel, even though they do obviously have that entire separate episode about Casa Bonita from well before they made the purchase. And after voicing concerns about the lack of Matt Stone voices, as well as the seeming struggle Trey had to maintain his voices in the last episode, I'm happy to say that every Everything seemed back to normal this week. Lots of Matt voices in this one, and Trey sounded totally fine. I really think they were probably just sick, which would explain them taking an additional week off. Last season, they actually only took one single week off in the middle of their six-episode run, and this time they took an additional week after Deep Learning, so I'm guessing they just needed the time to rest up and heal. And that's where we're at. I really dug this episode. I felt like one of those classic Cartman Manipulates Butters episodes, and it also had some really fun callbacks, and built on the little bit of continuity we've been seeing throughout these smaller seasons. A great balance of new and old, and a nice little birthday celebration for Kenny, who hasn't really gotten an episode focused on him since, like, the Scoots in season 22, maybe? Next week is the season finale. Damn, that really came fast. But don't worry, there will be two more Paramount specials before the end of the year, hopefully in the summer, just like last year. Okay, that's all I got. Hope you guys like those oh, dick and balls. Like that, Peace. Johnny! Two challenges!